And I suppose I can use this for a segue to talk about z-spheres. So what are z-spheres? When we go in here and we have our primitives, we have a bunch of 3D meshes, and we've already talked about how primitives work. And there's some really cool ones in here, like if I choose the gear 3D icon, I can go down here to initialize. And there's all sorts of cool initialize sections in here where I can go through and change these values and change the width and the coverage and all the cool things you can change to make this shape what you want. And remember, you can open these things up and move these around and add points if you need to to get just a look you're looking for. Of course, it's still a primitive, so if you want real polygons, we've got to go up here to make polymesh 3D, and now these are polygons. Down here is 2.5D brushes. Probably not going to use a lot of these in this course, but this is for when things are dropped to the document. We go out of edit mode, and then this is on the document now. So if we just kind of drag these things out, we'll get more of them. And if we go to our 2.5D brushes, like our simple brush, we can literally just draw on our canvas. We can select an alpha and get that kind of stroke. We can go in here to the eraser brush and start erasing things from our canvas. So all sorts of cool things you can do with 2.5D document drawing, but if you want to clear it, just again, hold down or press control N. And then we'll go back in here and right up here with all these 3D meshes and these primitives that you can use, there's a Z-sphere. So if we tap a Z-sphere to select it, we drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode. And again, I'm going to change my material here so we can see it a little bit better. I'm going to go to sketch shaded too. And there's a lot of really cool, uh, these ones that are here for like sketching. So here's like sketch shaded or sketch gummy. Uh, there's some cool ones you can use to get a different preview, but this is a Z-sphere. So what is a Z-sphere? Well, if we're in uh, edit mode, so we can rotate around our object here, just like with geometry, we can tap X to go into X symmetry. So here we are in X symmetry, we can turn on our floor, make sure we're Z forward. So if we wanna make a human, let's say, let's go to the very top and you're gonna see that cursor is gonna snap. So we can go ahead and drag out from the top and we can go to the bottom here and we can drag out from the bottom and up here we'll drag out and we'll just press and drag and that's gonna make a new Z sphere. And the cool thing is about the cool thing about z-spheres that are a little more flexible than polygons sometimes is you can go through here and you can just keep adding z-spheres and you can hit W to go into move mode so you can move a z-sphere out. You can hit Q to go back into draw mode. Let's go ahead and turn off our floor. We can uh, drag this out as we hold down or as we drag this out on here. We can hold down Shift and it'll snap to the parent z-sphere. So we can hit W and we can drag this down. If we make our brush size smaller, we'll only interfere will only affect a limited number of spheres here. If we make our draw size very big, we'll affect multiple Z spheres. Uh, and in fact, if we hit Q now and we go through and we want to put a joint in the middle, we can just tap in the middle and that'll put a joint. So we basically have joints, joint, joint, and in between those are bones, let's say. So we can hit W and we can grab the individual joints and move them around. So it's a very flexible system. You can go through here and very quickly move around the joints, and again, we'll hit Q, we'll draw out a pair of hips, and then hold down Shift as we draw it on this one, move it out, hit Q, hold down Shift as we draw out, to snap it to the parent size, and hit W, and then move these down here as feet, and we'll go to the side, and again, we'll hit Q, we'll make a pair of knees, and there we go. Now, if I want to delete any of these, I can hold down Alt, and we can just tap through and delete, and it's really unlimited as to what you can choose to make with your z-spheres here. If you want to add another arm, you just go through here, just add another z-sphere, drag this out, move this over, hit Q, and again, we're just hitting Q and W, switching between draw and move, and just moving these z-spheres around. Now you do still have scale and rotate. So if we go over here to, well, if we use move and we move the individual joint, you're gonna see we can move just the joint in the hierarchy chain. If we go through here and move the bone, it's going to move this and the child objects here. So we can go through here and we can actually use move to kind of get a different pose out of our mesh here. If we pull on the bone. If we pull on the joint, that's just going to move that joint position. Same thing if we go in here to scale, for example. If we scale on the bone, it's going to scale the entire parent and child relationship. If we scale the joint, it's literally just going to scale the joint. If we go in here to rotate, same deal. I can rotate the parent and the children, or I can rotate just the joint 
by itself. So we can rotate around that axis, and then again we can rotate the child and parent here. So between move, scale, rotate, and draw, you can go through here, and you can scale things down just by hitting E to go into scale mode here. You can hit Q to go into draw mode. You can go ahead and add a, a neck here. And we have a Z-sphere creation. Now, what you can do is go down here to adaptive skin. And if I hit A on my keyboard, if I hover over preview, see the hotkey for preview is A. I can hit A, and that'll go through and make a mesh. Now, you're going to see this is a looks like a DynaMesh, and that's because that's what it's doing. You're going to see the DynaMesh resolution is set at 256. However, if I take DynaMesh resolution down to zero, tap A, and then tap A again, you're going to see I get a much cleaner version of the polygons here. So this is going to be an adaptive scan and the density set to 2. If I set this to 1, you're going to see it's going to drop it down to the base resolution. But this again, this is just a preview. So hit A to go out of preview mode, and then just continue to add Z-spheres here. So let's go ahead and add some more Z-spheres here. Hit W to move this out. Hit Q. And rotate. So now you have a new mesh here. I'm going to hit A to go into adaptive skin. And if you want, you know, of course, you can turn the DynaMesh resolution up and have it DynaMesh, but you can always do that later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this down to zero, density at one, hit A, and there's our adaptive skin preview. If I go down here to adaptive skin, make adaptive skin, you're going to see it's going to put a skin Z sphere right here in our document. So now this has, this is real geometry. This is still a Z-sphere, even though it looks like real geometry. And in fact, even though you can go through here and make modifications to this geometry, if I hit A, it's going to go back to a Z-sphere. So just remember that if you go through here and sculpt a bunch of stuff, you can take these changes that you sculpt if you want to go through here and inflate on this geometry, for example, and then hit A and cha make changes to your uh, Z-sphere. However, if you do make changes to your Z-sphere and hit A, you may lose some of your sculpting changes. Not necessarily for sure, but if we go through here and then we go, let's hit Q, add a little bit of a little face there, and then hit A, you're gonna see I lost my sculpting changes. So just be very careful that if you are gonna sculpt on the Z-sphere, don't add any Z-spheres. And before you add Z-spheres, go down here to Adaptive Skin and say Make Adaptive Skin if you wanna change those sculptural changes. However, the safest thing to do is finish drawing with your Z-spheres here and then hit A so you can preview it. And if you like it, hit Make Adaptive Skin and that will give you actual geometry out here. So here's your skin Z-sphere and now you have real geo. Now at this point, you can go through here and say Geometry DynaMesh. Let's turn off Blur and just hit DynaMesh. And you can DynaMesh this as much as you want. Go through here and start sculpting on your mesh using all the techniques you've learned so far. Now you can also use these polygroups to your advantage. So if we undo that, you can just start sculpting on this. However, the distribution isn't really that good. Now we haven't talked about Z-Remesh yet, but you can Z-Remesh, say same, drop the adaptive size down a little bit, and you can just give yourself some new topology just by hitting Z-Remesh, nice even quads, and continue sculpting. But generally speaking, when I'm going to go in concept, I may just DynaMesh this. But before I do that, I might make this a little bit easier for me to work on. So two things. Number one, if I turn on my floor and turn on Z, and I make my draw grid size down to one. I already know ZBrush really likes to work within this space while I'm just working in ZBrush. So what I'm gonna do is go down here to deformation and hit unify. And now I know my brush size and scale uh, will work and be very compatible with ZBrush. So I'm gonna turn our floor off here. And another thing too is if I'm gonna work on these arms, it might be a little easier if I go through here and just take these arms off. So just control shift tap an arm, control shift drag, and then tap these remaining polygroups, and then go over here to Subtool Split Hidden. And because we have custom menus now, I can very quickly just go into my custom menu and say Split Hidden. So I can quickly go through here and grab these legs, split these off, grab these antennas, split these off. And now I can work on all these separately. So if I want to sculpt on the side of the body and the arms are in the way, I just hit Solo, go through here, and we'll just DynaMesh this. And now I can sculpt on this body separately. And if I need to raise the resolution, I can go in here to my custom menu, DynaMesh, or I can go down here to DynaMesh, raise the resolution, go through here with my sculpting brushes. And again, if I turn solo back on or off, 
Now you can see my arms are out of the way. In fact, I can Alt tap these arms, hit W, go to Unmash Mesh Center, or put the pivot where I want, and rotate and pose these arms out as needed. So it's a very quick way to go through here, add some subtool functionality, be able to Alt tap in here, go in, use your sculpting brushes, go into solo mode, and just work on things individually a little bit easier. Now, you don't have to just use Z-spheres. You can use Z-spheres in conjunction with other objects here. So if I go into File Open, and we go back to this guy we were working on here, we can go down here, and this original head here, I'm just going to go ahead and delete it out of our scene. So we just have our body in here. I'm going to go through here and say append a z-sphere. So I have a z-sphere appended. I'm going to go into transparency mode. So now I can see that z-sphere. So if I want, I can hit X to go across X symmetry. I can hit W and I can pull this down. We'll just put this where his hips are. I can hit Q, draw on the side here, move this out. And then again, Q, move this down here. Q to put in some knees and then Q, draw out some feet, W to move the feet. And now I can very quickly just get some quick geometry. I can hit A to go into adaptive skin. So if I turn on polyframe, you're gonna see I already get that adaptive skin preview, which if we scroll down and go here to adaptive skin, Turn density down to one, the dynamic resolution down to zero, hit preview again. That's my geometry. And if I want, I can say make adaptive skin. Now remember, this one that's still in our stack is a z-sphere. So we hit A, we still have z-spheres available to us. We don't need this anymore. We can just delete it out of our scene. Then I'm gonna go in here to append. I'm gonna grab this skin z-sphere that, that that adaptive skin button made. And now I have geometry with my guy here. So I can go here through here, I can take him and merge him down. Again, merge down, and you can assign a hotkey to this. My hotkey for this is Control E. So if I have this selected, I can hit Control E and then say OK. And because this already had Dynamesh properties, I can Control Drag, and that'll just Dynamesh the entire thing together. Now again, I know ZBrush likes to work in that unit space here, so I'm going to go down here to Deformation and Unify, or I can go into my Custom menu, and I have it right here. There we go. So I'm going to go back in here, crank my Dynamesh resolution up just a bit, And now when I Dynamesh this, these are all one piece, and I can continue sculpting. Now there's some other cool Z-Sphere functionality that exists. Uh, if you want to go ahead and let's go out of edit mode, let's hit Control N, and very quickly we'll go in here to our palette, grab a Z-Sphere, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode. And if we hit X, we go, of course we have X symmetry. You can also turn on Activate Symmetry, we'll do Y direction radial count of eight. You can also do radial symmetry. So if you want, you can go through here and you can add radial symmetry. And if you ever want to switch, you can say transform. Let's put on activate symmetry in the X, drop out of radial symmetry by turning that off. And then we can go back in here and continue to sculpt. maybe some, time, some kind of uh, tentacle creature here. Another thing you can do is you can go down here to Z Sketch. And while we have this object, we can go in here to Edit Sketch, and you're gonna see it's gonna change my brushes to Sketch Brushes. In fact, let's go over here and let's grab a Sketch Shaded shader. And as we go through here and brush on our object, it's gonna leave behind a little Z Sketch. So these are Z Sketch brushes. You can go through here and you can make your draw size bigger and make bigger Z sketch strokes, and you can make a draw size smaller, make smaller ones here, and you can also hold down shift, and you can smooth these together. And it's going to have different behavior depending on, if I hold down shift, you're going to see there's smooth one, two, and three. So these are going to have different behaviors here, and there's also armature. So if I take a Z sketch and I draw this out, you'll see it all automatically kind of go off into space. This is a very easy way to kind of go through here and say, add wings to an object, or antenna. And then of course you can hold down shift. And if you hold down alt, that'll go ahead and delete these as well. In fact, if you go over here and hit 
optimized, it'll go ahead and get rid of any Z sketches that aren't visible on the surface here. So if you have a bunch of layered Z sketches, it'll go ahead and get rid of those for you. So this is a way to add cool mass to the object here. And in fact, if you hit the comma key and you go in here to project, you're gonna see under Z Zoo, there's a bunch of really cool animal Z spheres in here. And you can, again, just the exact same way, you double click on these, load these up, and those will be your armatures. And they're all kind of different animals you can start with. And underneath tool, you're gonna see there's a Z sketch folder. So I can double click on these. And you're gonna see like this Z sketch shrimpy here. Let's go ahead and let's go here to subtool. We'll turn off colorize here so you can see it a little bit better. Now it's important to note, you don't have to start with an armature. You can just start with a Z sphere and start Z sketching. I'll show you that in a second. But first let's explain what happens when I hit A with a Z sketch showing. If I hit A, you're gonna see it gets rid of my armature and I only see what's called a unified skin. So if I go over here, let's turn on our polyframe here. I go down here to unified skin, you're gonna see that preview. When I hit A, when I have a Z sketch, it's gonna make a unified skin. If I go down here under Z sketch and turn off edit sketch and hit A, now I'm gonna get an adaptive skin. Now I can mix both of these. The easy, there's a few different ways to do this. The easiest way to do this is just to say adaptive skin, make adaptive skin, turn on your Z sketch. Let's go out of adaptive skin by hitting A. We'll turn our edit sketch back on. Under unified skin, if I hit A now, I can say make unified skin. So now I have my skin Z sphere armature and then my unified skin here. So I'm gonna take my armature skin Z sphere go to subtool, append my skin Z sphere unified skin, and now those are both together. And at this point, because Dynamesh is already turned on with that resolution from the unified skin, I can just, if I want, merge these down. So switch back over to our startup material, control drag, and now these are both Dynamesh together. So that's an easy way to get your armature geometry and your unified skin geometry from your Z sketch all at once. Now, of course, if we grab a Z sphere, and we go ahead and turn on Xsymmetry. If you immediately go down here to Z Sketch and just say Edit Sketch, now you can immediately start just sketching on top of the Z Sphere. So we can go through here, I can drag off a pair of legs. We can connect these over, we can go up the middle, drag out some shoulders and some arms. And again, if we switch over here to Armature, we got some very quick arms in here. We can use move, so I can go in here to the move brush just by hitting W. And I can go through here and I can move these things. We can hold down shift, hit Q to go back to draw mode, hold down shift to smooth these together. Go back in here and start drawing here and let's switch back over to our sketch A. So again, if I hit A now, you're gonna see it's gonna get rid of my armature and it'll leave my unified skin. So you don't necessarily need a Z-sphere armature. You can go through here and you can sculpt out whatever you want and get some very cool results, some very neat designs to start with. And again, you just hit A to view this. And again, if you want to go in here, turn your unified resolution up to get more detail That'll give you even more detail. Say, make unified skin. Now this is skin Z sphere, real geometry here. We'll go ahead and turn on X symmetry. And we can continue to go through here and sculpting as needed. So again, just go in here with your clay brush, your clay build up brush, your smooth brush, your Damien standard, and go through here and start sculpting on your geometry.